Some of y'all have been waiting quite a bit of time to hear me say this. I was 100% completely dead wrong about wealth. Let me explain. Now, to do so, we're actually going to use 7 Zone here. I, I meant to do this when uh, Familia Royale was live. I didn't get an opportunity to. This is the team we're going to use, and I'm going to showcase exactly what I mean by this. Now, first things first, you have to understand the specs on wealth. So let's go ahead and pull him up here. It'd be easier to do this the way I'm holding the uh, thing. So, first of all, we know his stats. His stats are, like, right here. Uh, after all the CP that I've got in my wealth units, he, his HP is 4065. That's extremely good. MP is 434. That's really good. Now, this is at level, like, 24 to 28-ish on pretty much everybody's uh, CP stats. So, when I say, like, you know, these units get really good... Look at that magic stat, 2518. That is off the charts, off the charts for a, uh, a magic unit. Now, here's where I was really kind of questioning wealth. Now, first things first, skill one, slow, low thunder magic attack and allies magic and endurance plus 50%. Where is the thunder stat, right? Come down here. Super Thunder Magic Attack, Temporary Magic Boost, and Magic Resist and Thunder Resist down 30%. Would love to have seen those to be 35. They would have been so much better. But he still doesn't have a Thunder stat. You really have to use this dude with somebody who gives Thunder. And the biggest kind of downside to Thunder right now is we do not have anybody, at least as far as I'm aware, per my research, nobody in this game gives 100% thunder like you do with light and wind and a bunch of other units. I think wind's got like two or three units that give 100% light damage or 100% wind damage. Whatever, you get the idea. Wind is pretty awesome. Light is pretty awesome. Most of the other elements kind of lacking a little bit. So Wealth really needs somebody that gives him thunder attack damage to really take off. The other thing that's really weird about him is skill two. And I'll read this because I was very confused about this when it dropped. Fast, high thunder magic attack plus 60% per self magic reduction skill. So, this skill will only really work if you've been attacked with an anti-magic uh, skill. Now, let's use this in the context of war game. In war game... Somebody attacks you with anti-magic, they're going to attack you both the uh, assist and on the adventurer side. This would be a killer stat in that situation. But you still have got to have somebody who's going to give him thunder damage. Otherwise, he's just really not going to produce. So, in regards to this unit, in regards to this unit and every how I was wrong about this unit and everything, I'm going to go ahead and jump in here. We're going to do some damage testing and I'll show you the team that I'm using here. Okay, first things first, Lene, who needs no introduction, both her and the Finn that's attached to her, they are doing 33% SA gets charged, and that's just because we need a little bit of SA for this. Now, remember I said he needs thunder attack damage? Kojo here, on his skill one, gives all allies thunder attack, I'm sorry, yeah, thunder attack damage, counter rate, and guard rate 50%. He really is kind of kind of be Wealth's best friend in this regard, okay? Likewise, Nagisa here. Nagisa, thunder attack damage and wind attack damage and counter rate all 20%. She cost me a star bond. She is worth it. Worth it for this team. So worth it for this team. If you have Wealth, you need her. Now, here's a weird one. Here's a unit that doesn't even get any hero ascension. She's got like nothing in her whatsoever. She's older, but we're going to use her for her, her SA. Thunder resist down 50% for all foes. There is a single target thunder resist down 60%. I believe that's the highest, but I wanted an AOE one, and you'll kind of see why when we get to it. Um, while most of these for RNG, RNG could be really weird. We're gonna get numbers all across the board on these foes. So, really having Thunder Resist down 50% is gonna give us a wide range, and we can average out our numbers 
and kind of go from there. Now, unfortunately, I do not have the unit that does Thunder Resist down uh, 20%, so I have to use Reveria, who's got the Thunder Resist down 15%. So that is one kind of deficiency on this team. I'm losing about 5% damage with her, but you'll see with the numbers, it's still impressive. Now, of course, well, if we've already talked about him and um, when it comes to magic resistance, we're going to be using Demeter here, the Colonel Demeter, to drop magic resistance down 20%. Likewise, likewise, Hephaestus. So Hephaestus is going to give magic plus 20% to all allies when she drops in match. Likewise, Winnie, we're going to use her in a really interesting way. And she's part of what's going to make these so difficult to achieve. And I will tell you, I've done over 35 runs. 35 of these runs over the course of the week. Part of the reason we haven't had as much content. Uh, but I, when I was kind of dogging on, on Wealth a little bit, I do want to go back and correct this. So you guys know before these go away that you need to collect this unit. Okay? So, SA. All and single targets down 50%. That's going to give us the maximum amount of damage we can get out of Wealth. So we're looking at Wealth in basically his best possible scenario as the game sits now. This might improve over time. Hopefully it will. But this is going to be our best possible scenario. Our goal is to get Winnie's SA. Basically, Lina is going to uh, drop out after turn one. Winnie's going to come in. She's going to do her SA in turn four. Then she's going to drop out. And in comes uh, Haruhime. Haruhime obviously is here, not only for her um, her healing, but also for her 100% magic stat that she's going to give everybody. And then, of course, the Asfi unit, that does 20, I believe it's 20%, uh, could be wrong about that. Yeah, 20% single target damage to your foes. So really, we're like at our best possible scenario. Plus, uh, Dex and Endurance are super buffed on this team. This team is going to be stellar. But the name of the game is seeing what wealth can produce. So let's go ahead and jump in. I've got this all pre-recorded. I'm going to go ahead and basically do my reactions to this, edit it all up, and then we'll kind of make our judgments from there. So enough fooling around. Let's actually get down into the testing of this unit. And there's a lot to talk about here. So like I said, uh, this first round, uh, basically the first turn of this whole event, we're going to put uh, Lina up in front, and that's just to get our SA gates charge. Because the goal here is to ultimately test wealth in as many scenarios as we can. Now, that includes getting a ton of SAs. Now, turn two. Basically, what we're doing, turn one, we're going to do everybody's major buff. And then turn two, we're going to do everybody's major debuff. And turn two actually brings in Winnie. And Winnie's an interesting situation. Because we want her to survive long enough. So turn two... We're going to do her skill one attack, and that's going to give everybody some HP regen. That also helps when we're waiting for Hara Hime to come in here. Then we actually have a bit that we can do for the next couple of turns without having to worry about the heals and all that good stuff. Turn three, we're going to basically do this skill here. That's going to basically do a few debuffs on the opponent. But more than anything else, it's going to replicate turns, and that's something that we're going to need. Because if we don't, we got to rebuff all the time. Anybody who played the game before her, he may drop, knows exactly what I'm talking about. Now, finally, you know, her health is in the dire straits here, but she's going to be all right, ultimately, at a turn four. Turn four, we're going to do her SA. Her SA is the most important thing here. Her SA does a 50% technically buff, but because it goes on the opponent, it is a debuff, a 50% debuff on all AOE and single target attacks. This is huge, and this is basically the big thing that's going to allow us to do all the damage in the world. So every single one of our runs that we're going to do tonight are going to include this basic arrangement right here. So turn one through turn four are going to be identical on all of our runs. Now the goal here now is to build up a quad SA. So to do that, so we don't kill them too quickly because we could very easily kill them very quickly right now. Basically, all of our mainline units, I'm going to go back and I'm just now going to do base level attacks. Now, do remember, they're all buffed up. And you kind of have to have them buffed up for this attempt. I know a lot of people are going to say, why did you buff them? Well, for basically Winnie and for Tione to survive this. Remember, Tione can't do Hero Ascension. So for her to survive this, she needs those decks and Endurance buffs. She needs to have those. 
She will not survive without him. Okay? Awesome. Turn 5. Haruhime finally came in. That's great stuff. I prefer her to jump, jump in or turn 4, but, you know, beggars can't be choosy. Now, basically with Haruhime, we're going to do her Sheikah uh, skill, skill 3, or, or sorry, skill 2, very sparingly. Basically, we need Yosuga skill 3 all the way through. Okay? That's it. Why am I doing other skills here? Maybe I quite hadn't figured it out yet on this run. But anyway, doesn't matter. The goal is to do as little damage as possible leading up to getting the full complement of special attacks. That's the number one goal here. Because we really can't do a real true honest test if they're already dead. So... I don't know why I'm doing all these skills here. This this was a much earlier run. I did this run literally days ago. It's my first. Okay, so now we're going back and doing base attacks. So basically the way this works, Kojo's first skill is that all allies buff that I was talking about earlier. But it also does an endurance uh, buff that basically allows everybody to survive. And it's really, really, really important. In fact, I think I re-ran it to make sure that Haruhime got it. It might have been what I did there. Um, but... We'll get to showcasing all the debuffs here in a moment, but right now we're just building up to that point of quad SA, all right? And it's going to happen before you know it. Actually, the funny part is, if it weren't for the fact that we lost Winnie here, all of these runs, with one exception, most all of these runs, would have been S clears. So if that says anything, even while we're kind of nerfing her damage and all that, we still would have easily laughed and S cleared this event, once again with one exception, and I'll get to that in a few moments. But I digress. So on turn nine, we've got a double SA. Now, in some situations that and you'll see one later on that we'll do, it might be preferable to do the double SA and then to do Haruhime Yosuga. Because remember, Kojo's SA and Tione's SA. Both of those essays only last for one turn. So, if we're going to try to basically test wealth in any other kind of circumstance, which we'll do momentarily, we need to have those essays out much earlier, and we need Yosuga so that we can keep them buffed, because you can actually keep those in effect with that particular attack. All right? So, obviously then, we do Haruhime's uh, essay whenever, and then test Wealth's basic damage at that point. Here we go, turn 11. Uh, I believe it's turn 13 we finally do the double essay. Just checking, all of our buffs are still in place. Everything is still good there. Uh, sorry, I do kind of run through it a little quickly, but we're really trying to just get the damage out here. That's, that's our main goal, our main factor in all of this. So... Turn 11, all of these essays are still, or all these buffs are still in play. Everything's still good there. All the debuffs are in play. We're just checking and making sure they haven't lost anything. Because, realistically speaking, if we're not careful and we're, if we're not watching uh, basically what we're doing, we could lose some of those buffs and debuffs. Part of that was because I was doing Sheikah. And remember, you need Sheikah for basically the penetration rate. So, here we are. Turn 13, I'll grab my phone here, turn 13, and we are about to do a quad SA. And this is kind of the moment we've led up to. Now, I'm going to talk about all these in each and every one of these, but for now, we're going to pause here, and I'm going to go back. And Before we get to the big numbers, I want to showcase what Wealth does with every single one of his skills. So in this test, we're actually going to test Welf's skill 3 starting out. Now, Welf's skill 3 isn't his strongest attack, but it is his strongest attack when he's not debuffed, which he is not right now. So we're going to go ahead and see what he does here. So you'll notice a 440 and a 436. Fantastic numbers for not being his strongest attack. 440... 436. That is really good. I didn't see what the one behind it is, but it's kind of irrelevant. Um, those are fantastic numbers. You really kind of can't see them 
behind the critical penetration and all that stuff. That is with critical, that is with penetration. That's literally as buffed out as he can get with some minor, minor, minor exceptions. But on this turn, let's do his skill one and see what it does. Now, remember, this is a low attack. This is not a... And I think that other one's a mid or a high attack. I can't remember exactly. But still, this is kind of his... I wouldn't say base level attack, but pretty close to base level. All right, now I've got it set down to a slow speed now. Uh, he's going to do a bunch of basically counters here. Now notice his counters are hitting for like the better part of, you know, one and three quarters, one and a half. So right here we've got a 179, a 207. We've got some pretty strong hits here. So in all reality, our hits are really substantial on this. Uh, he's doing really well, especially, I mean, remember he's maxed out. His weapon is fully ascended. Everything is proper on this dude. Now I, there's a little bit of CP left to go on him, but, and I am missing about 5% damage, but as far as an RNG spread goes, that's averaging out just under 200,000. I really don't know what that third number is, unfortunately, and I've killed the fourth dragon, but let's see what his SA does when he's solo. Now, we are waiting to do the numbers on his SA when he does a quad. But solo, let's see what we get here. Okay. Good animation, by the way. I do really like his animations. Uh, they are absolutely stunning. And let me see, make sure I can pause this at the right moment. All right. So by himself... 1.50, 1.539, I can't see what the back one is, but about one and a half, one and a half mil, which is very, very, very respectable. Like, remember, not that long ago, we'd be impressed by these numbers from a single target. So, to see this from an AoE is really good, especially when he's solo. Like, uh, do bear in mind, he's only 50% uh, thunder damage, he's not 100% thunder damage, and uh, we've only got so many debuffs in the opponent. Now, if you guys are kind of going, well, why was his damage so much better during Familia Royale? The answer is really simple. Um, during Familia Royale, actually, he's debuffed there. I could have done some testing with it, but I didn't even notice that until now. They must have put that debuff on on this turn. We're going to have to go back, back and test skill two here in a moment. That's his big one. Uh, but I didn't see that he was debuffed prior to doing this essay. Neither here nor there. Let's go test skill two, see what he does. But if, getting back to Familia Royale. During Familia Royale, all those were Phantasma units. And being that he's a Phantasma... Not Phantasma, I'm sorry. What is his killer? Anyway. They were his killer type. These are dragons. He's not a dragon killer. So... A spirit killer. Spirit killer. So being that these are not spirit types, arguably not much of a difference there, but being that these are spirit these are not spirit types, they're not going to get that extra damage buff. So if you're wondering why his damage is so much lower than it was during Familia Royale, that's pretty much the answer. But neither here nor there. Let's see if we can get skill two out. So here we are actually selecting skill two. Skill two, if you remember, is a fast high thunder magic attack with 60% per each self magic reduction skill and also does a, a major debuff on the uh, opponents, but, or I'm sorry, on your, removes debuffs on your allies, which kind of negates the whole purpose of doing it, um, especially with as low an MP cost as it is, but neither here nor there. This is a rare scenario to come across, so it's hard to utilize this. It literally took, and I'm not even joking, 35 different runs in 7th Zone just to get him in this right scenario. So, let's go ahead, run this real quick, and see what kind of numbers we get out of this skill. So here's Haruhime's SA, and then he's a fast skill, so he should be like first. Okay, so we've got like, actually, yeah... Yeah, I actually skill three hit harder. Interesting. I expected this to hit harder. Skill three must be a super class. Either way, good hits here. I actually thought, in my heart of hearts, that skill two was going to hit harder than skill three. Now, the exception to this will be in war game. When you've got the double debuff, you've got the assist debuff and the uh, adventure debuff. You can kind of see the numbers over here and kind of equate to what that would be in Wargame. They would be phenomenal numbers. Now, remember, they're not going to be, 
in the hundreds of thousands because you're not going to be super buffed up and all that stuff. The numbers are a little bit different in Wargame, but it's still going to be the tens of thousands, and it's going to be huge, like team-killingly huge. But I'm a little shocked, if I'm honest. I really thought this was going to be his big skill. Interesting. Interesting. Neither here nor there. Let's get back to the big dog. Let's get back to the big number and see what we get from that. Okay, so this is the big one. This is, without question or doubt, the biggest one. This is going to be the quad essay between all four units simultaneously. This is the big one that we've basically built up to at this point. Now, we already know he does 1.5 mil basically solo so let's see what he does i should be interesting to see what kojo does here um because i don't honestly remember um curiouser and curiouser all right now, i don't like to fast forward through essays animations i really think these essay animations are beautiful especially uh since we just got the code 11 the code 11 is getting ready to end i think at 1.3 really really now, to be fair, to be fair, his debuff skill and Tione's debuff skills really are not in place. Now, here's the big one. Um, and I will say they do a combo attack, but you're not going to see the, the damage here because, well, Wolf's pretty much going to kill him here. Uh, but I will say the combo attack hits for about 200k. So let's see, which is a good, good amount for a combo. All right. So I see a 2.43 and a 2.81. It's hard to tell what the one behind it is. Uh, I'd have to like slow down the footage and go watch it again. But that is amazing. Darn near 3 million. The better part of 3 million. You could literally like average that out and it's a 2.6 mil between the two we can see. Still, the difference in RNG is pretty phenomenal there. But a 2.8 million attack stat is absolutely legendary absolutely legendary so that's huge guys that's insanely huge um i'm pretty impressed let me know what you guys think in the comments section i'm really happy with the numbers we got out of these guys um i really feel like wealth really really deserves probably he deserved the second look and he deserves at least some uh notoriety if you basically haven't gotten them already just make sure you get them before the event is gone that's the whole purpose of the video make sure you guys let me know what you think in the comments i'm pretty impressed you know the better part of three mil like literally if we had the extra five percent we probably would have broken three mil with some other rng or whatever so those are the numbers like comment definitely comment let me know your thoughts Share this out if you have anybody that's maybe doubting wealth like I was initially. I'm a little shocked that his second skill was weaker than his third skill. A little bit, honestly. I thought that 60% would count for more, but who knows. Catch you guys on the next one.